you're a bookworm like me, check out one of my audiobooks, ebooks, paperbacks down in the description below. So right now I'm doing this um commentary video outdoors. It's kinda hot out here, I ain't gonna lie. It's 106. For some reason I don't mind it. Having uh having some cold ones out here, so that kinda helps. Kinda breezy. I'm outside on, on my balcony. So you might hear um you might hear some people passing by, some dogs barking, an occasional gunshot. But that's all right. Let me tell you a little history about this movie, man. Me and my homeboys in Oakland were obsessed with this movie back in the um, mid mid nineties. It was a hood movie, so that's just one reason. The other reason was because we were um, car thieves ourselves. It was it ain't nothing I'm proud of. It was fucking stupid, especially because for the most part we we did it just for fun. Just to get around, you know, like jaw writing. Sort of like in this movie, you know. It was stupid. I wish I could take it back. To get into some uh money making ventures even in my teenage years, you know. That's the that's the cool thing about uh, this generation. They got more creative ways, you know, of uh, making money or just having fun. You know, but it is what it is and it was what it was. I should have did this hood movie a long time ago. But without further ado, let's do it. Hi. Yeah, New Jersey back in the 90s was the uh, car theft capital of America. Maybe the world. I don't know, but definitely America. <coughs> See how he's by himself. He don't know anybody, nobody's going up to him saying what's up or gre greeting him or anything. That's why a lot of guys join gangs. That's how it is. Juvenile shit and a uh, county. But yeah, in a gang or whatever, you get there and they, they're right there waiting for you. They show you love and show you around and everything. For her, it wasn't about cars. Hey, hey, New Jersey Drive. Man, it takes me back. We never knew, well at least back then, we never figured out how to use that Slim Jim. We would just break the windows like dumbasses. Nah, he said, you ain't call me last night. Right now I'd be like, how come you didn't text me back? Hey, Ray Love. Back from the Bay Area. Marin City. The jungle. I'm playing in a Cadillac. <laughs> Or Lincoln, whatever that is. Yo, 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 son. Yo, kid. Oh, this part's crazy. Oh, the fuck was that, man? I want for the good guys. The police got their own little tricks. <laughs> Fucking cop just shooting. Shit. Then that guy right there came out in um, Passion of the Christ. That's one of uh, one of the Roman soldiers. He kept telling me he didn't want to go upstairs because his mom would kill him for getting shot. We we're all afraid to disappoint our parents or parents. Hey, the guy from uh, Clueless and uh, Scrubs. This is probably like his uh, second movie. Yeah, it's Fox. Right now they be me too for doing that. And there was always one who seemed to like his job a little bit too much. I know him more. God damn, I can't stand those kind of people. Love their job just a little too much. Hey yo, hey yo. Big ass pants. Straight nineties. <laughs> I swear, our pants were so baggy back then, we used to um, tuck them inside I our shoe. It'd be so long, so you could do that and then fold them outside of your shoe. That way it won't drag. No. He's looking at Car Driver magazine. He ain't looking at it to buy something just to see what he can steal. Yeah, 
<laughs> you better not try and marry her. There's some asshole ass cops in this movie. Every one of them. Every what white person in this movie is evil as hell. What about her? Yo, man, they be breathing, man. <laughs> hey, yo, Ron. Nah, man. Then that bully went through his grill. What I see every day are confused children trying to find their way through a harsh and unforgiving world. Nah, that's bullshit. Them, even in this movie, they're doing it for fun. They don't have to do that. They're not doing it for uh, to make money. At least, not all of them. And when we were doing it, we didn't do it for money either. We were just too young to, to drive, so we Back couldn't school, afford a car, so we, you know, had to wait outside a half an we hour took one. Why do a lot of hood movies got voiceovers? What are they doing? Ain't the first time. Black Spot looking kind of cool. See, wrong, There's always that girlfriend trying to keep you out of trouble. What's up, girl? Oh, what a boy. Oh, they put a chicken with him right here. <laughs> a bunch of little cars. <laughs> little buckets. They had a whole task force of police dedicated to uh, auto theft. It was crazy. They look suspicious as hell. Any cop sees them driving by, pulling them over quick. See what I'm saying? We used to put up uh, like fake keys in the ignition. We used to roll down all the windows just to look, you know, as normal as possible. Damn. And that's what we used to call handles. And you can handle that car. Hey, Heavy D. Rest in peace. Ooh. Oh shit, here we come. Bounce get bounce. Take that shit back to Avon Street, faggot. Whoa. Bounce to get bounce. Why don't you get a job, motherfucker? Be all you can be. <laughs> you too, shit. And there he is. Back for revenge. Oh, this part's really messed up. Now one black police officer. Do it, man. Do it. Damn. See, that's one thing about us when we're um, doing our little stupid ass thing in the mid '90s when we we're teenagers, me and my homeboys. Is that once you get caught, right? Once you get blurred by the police and they got you, just give up, man. Do your time. You know what I mean? You got caught. It's over. You know, you could run away from them if you can, but once they got you cornered like that, don't do it. Because those cops are, are scared as fuck. They're nervous, even back then. So, I never understood that. Back then, the people who did it or the people that do it now, I don't understand that. Gone. Dead on impact. Let me tell y'all a quick story. My um, We had a stolen like a Bronco or something like that, Explorer or something like that. And uh, everybody was getting dropped off. And I was driving. And um, my uh, me and my homeboy, he lived like 10 blocks away from me. So I get to my house and um, I get out. And he gets on the driver's side because he's, he's taking that shit home. He's taking that car home. He drops me off, right? I start walking towards my house. Just a few steps towards my house walking a cop gets behind him and he drives off right so I'm like oh fuck like damn I'm gonna hit him up hopefully he doesn't get arrested or something so I go to the back of my um, house to see my cousins there because he used to live behind us uh, he wasn't so I'm like alright so I go back to the front of my house to get inside my house and then I I'm looking like I see the sirens go going off way like I don't know five blocks away. I, I could see it from way far away, and I, I'm just looking. And the closer they get, I know I see that it's my homeboy in the um, in the Bronco or the, the Explorer. And I'm just looking like, oh man, you know he's 
he's pulling a high speed chase. And I'm just standing right there on the corner of my house. You know, it's like it's like a uh, it's hard to explain, but it's it's called Hagenberger in Oakland, East Oakland. You ever been there? You know someone that's from there? They know what it is. It's it's a street, but it's almost like a freeway that you could go to like 45 miles an hour legally, right? That's the speed limit. But um, yeah, he's coming down fast as hell. Right behind him is the police. So he's, he he gets uh, close to my um, house and he swerves and he, he's driving right towards me, like head on right towards me. So I back up like, oh my, like, oh shit, this motherfucker finna hit me. And he does it ah, right at the last minute, he swerves and he keeps going straight. And um, I, it's like a few cops behind him. And the next day, I, you know, I hit everybody up on my homeboys and I went, oh, he, you know, he got caught. And then I, like a, a few days later, a week, they let him go, whatever, because he's a juvenile and shit. And um, he explains to me what happened. And um, he said, yeah, he, right after he, he saw me, he said he saw me like, oh, I saw you just looking at me and shit. And, and I, I swore and I kept going. And um, I, a few blocks after that, I jumped out of the, the, the truck and I ran to some houses. I, I hit some fences and shit, whatever, and I tried to hide. But they found my ass. Somebody, I think I guess the homeowners or the people living there ratted them out. But um, it reminded me of that of that part we just saw with um that guy getting hit. You know when you when you uh, I mean the police got you cornered and they, you just it's, there's no no more running, no more you, you don't resist. Just give up. Fuck it. You got caught. Why none of these guys have mustaches? Oh, this part is cold. I mean, she blames him for sure. Damn, he takes it too, cause he knows. Ghetto pain, man. Wow, man. When we used to uh, pour, pour beer for the dead, for the loved ones that passed away, you don't do that no more. Pour out a little liquor. Oh shit. Nah, they go pop. Something. At least he got one. Or stepdad, I think he yeah. is. Get off the phone. Okay. Nah, <laughs> before cell phones, man. But see, you ain't got to worry about that. Not even if it was your business. No. Damn. Now it is my business. I am making it my business. You got a problem with Hell that? Oh yeah, he lives under your roof. Funny. God damn it. No, I'm not funny. And I ain't laughing. Get locked up in and out of jail all the time. Didn't you expect us to come and get your ass out? You got another thing coming, man. Oh, man, you can stop the bus right there, man. I ain't trying to hear that, man. I'm not trying to hear that. You could try, not try. You don't hear that shit. It must have been hard as hell being a parent in the so 90s big. for uh, hey. Latinos and, and black uh, parents. Now, I'm sorry, mama. I put you through some shit. Trying to lynch a black man out this motherfucker, sir. I'm telling you, man. Like, <laughs> 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 that part is funny as hell. No, you ain't talking to no damn body. Get inside. You know what? Listen, I'm a fucking going nowhere, man. Ooh. What's the matter with you? Damn. Nigga, you worried about Roscoe? You better be worried about your mom. That's messed up, for real. He got. Car stealing equipment and hanging in his room. Is that TK Kirkland? Whatever the fuck his name is? Oh man, these motherfuckers everywhere. I remember some people, they interviewed me in Juvenile Hall and they, really, they asked me a bunch of questions, but they, they uh, most wanted to know why I was stealing cars and shit. And uh, my dumbass juvenile answer was, um, but we don't, we don't steal from the, uh, from the hood, from the ghetto. We go to like rich places and steal their cars. And the way I saw it is they got insurance, they got money, so it ain't really gonna hurt them too much. And they explained it to me exactly how insurance works. And I didn't know. I was like, whoa. See, if if what I know now, I knew then. Man, that shit. It feels really fucked up for somebody to take your your, your property like that. Cold ass part right here. He's going right through his shit, like whatever. And he's right there in the room. What you doing, man? Say what? Man, I'm looking for my scissors. In my bag, you looking for your scissors? Nigga, I wasn't in your bag. 
you the <laughs> bag, man. I wasn't in your bag. You calling me a liar, black man? Don't call me no motherfucking liar. <laughs> right, fuck you. Fuck you, man. Fuck get out of here, man. Okay, I got you, bitch. Damn. Get a real job, man. Get a real job. He keeps saying that. Like he got one. Nineties drive by. Man. I think now the drive by was uh frowned upon in California after the nineties and uh damn near outlawed. Like you it wasn't looked upon too well. Oh this part is crazy too. Just steal a, a fucking cop car. <laughs> Damn, got it. Oh, man. Shit. Let me try this. <laughs> Everybody's swerving. College Mother fucking kids. It's probably the best part of the whole movie. Step away from the car, please. <laughs> away from the car. Come on out, come on out. Don't look at me. What are you looking at? Get your hands up now. Reach for the sky, bucko. Bucko. <laughs> okay, okay. You have the right to be stupid ass geek motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you imagine how they fucking felt? If this shit was real, like in real life. Look at that shit. I forgot to mention, man, um, all that shit I'm talking about, my teenage days, you know, doing them dumb ass shit, um, it's, it's in that in that book, that little, uh, that shameless plug you see at the beginning of this video, uh, the book's called Dark Innocence, and um, this part right here was inspired, what inspired me to write uh, a part in that, in that story, in that book kind of similar to this but instead of uh, some college kids it's police they're at the uh, which is kind of like what happened in real life somewhat but we uh we're, god damn we, we were so fucking stupid for real we uh we tagged a cop car you know we, we, we sprayed we, we spray painted in and shit we scratched up the windows with these things they used to call scribers which um you could write, you could scratch uh, windows permanently right into a window. In the story, after that, they go to the drive-in where the car was parked. So pretty much the cops are inside eating, and the cop the cop car is parked outside in the, in the parking lot. They do what they do. They do what they do to it, and then they go to the drive-through, right? And then once they leave the drive-through. The cops see them leaving the drive-thru and they start laughing at the cops inside. Just like these guys right here, exactly like this. So subconsciously I probably got it from this. Like I was inspired by this for real. Oh shit. What the fuck is this? Oh, here we go. Get on the fucking ground. <laughs> he said eat some fucking dirt. <laughs> oh man, I remember uh and a uh, good fellas when he was backing up from the driveway and he thought he was getting whacked right but he said nah if they were wise guys he wouldn't have heard anything he'd just be dead but when he heard that cop say uh don't move motherfucker <laughs> he knew they were police Damn. On a rampage. Lawyer. You ain't got no lawyer. Bam. I remember that part. What's your name? D's. D's what? D's nuts, man. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's a classic. That's a classic one. Hey, yeah, that's the priest from uh, The Sopranos. Charles what? Charles Masson. <laughs> See, back then, I don't know about now, but back then, I don't think you, could, you were able to fingerprint juveniles, right? So, you were able to give them a fake name and somehow they, they would release you to 
cops. Anybody, like, like it could be as long as you're adults, they'll, 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 they'll release you. I remember at some point I was so damn stubborn. I, I was like, nah, man, like, I got no family, I got nothing, and um, they they took me to my address. They drove me there, some some counselor person or something like that. And they knocked, and my mom's came out, and I had you know I had to tell her the truth and whatever, but. Um, a lot of us back then, we we got out with uh, crackheads, uncles, relatives who you wouldn't tell our parents and shit. You know, I don't know if it is like that now, but that's how it was. Have a nice day. What's up with you, man? <laughs> He's all happy. What's this? You be telling us lies? You got a big ass head. Hey. <laughs> Look at that shit. <laughs> because anything, anything can happen in this big bad motherfucking world. So when people come around, <laughs> it's big bad motherfucking world. Another day in jail. What? She's all used to it already. Damn. Spend another night in that place. Still trying to holler at Spark. That was a long time ago, Kyle. Like when you said my name like that. <laughs> Only certain women, only certain girls in your life could you call, call you by your government name. You know you still do. You got my heart with you want it. <laughs> that ghetto game. <laughs> that's all they do and shit. Oh, that's funny. Oh, man. Little sister. Yeah, get the fuck out. With your big earring wearing ass. No, I'm not stressing you. You just mad because I got a better Oh, hell. No, she didn't just say that. Oh, walk your ass home. Oh, shit. What's happening, baby? What the fuck you looking at me for? What's up? You want some of this? Want some of what? What's that? You want some of this? Here. Yeah, some of this. <laughs> oh man, I remember this part. Even the females get down. She looks like a, a Grinch character. Damn, bunch of them. Rodney King time. Hey, say anything for me, huh? <laughs> That's some real cop shit right there. What well, is the dirty ones? Oh, I like this part too. He finds his fucking photo. <laughs> For the homies. He ain't even driven. That's some real beer too, the way, you know, it looks real. Like it was like a real beer. That's the life. Stupid, crooked ass, fucked up life. That's how the dog pound got shot at. They were trying to film um, that New York, New York rap song, that rap video in New York, trying to diss New York. According to them, they weren't trying to diss New York, but fuck that. They, they, were, they were a little bit. They don't get down, I mean, in the West Coast, they don't have fucking big ass buildings like that all over the fucking place. So they, they didn't expect that, you know what I mean? So somebody from a rooftop, just like this, Shot at them at their uh, trailer. Never got caught. It's a ghetto, but it's a different environment, man. Look at that. Damn. What's wrong with you? He could have really killed the cop and he was walking, walking away like it's the funniest shit ever. It's a big ass dog. So he's the only one trying to make money off his. Uh, Car stealing thing. Did I tell you not to come on my property with no rise unless you call me first? Hiring right, for a change. Being <laughs> shit. Sure, That's why he does what he does. See, one thing is stealing cars, another thing is carjacking. It's a whole different level when it comes to uh, sentencing. <laughs> he already knows. <laughs> See, they show both sides. Like he's doing what he what he does, but 
that home life he, that he has ain't it ain't the norm. Yo, I told you I was gonna make a move, so I did what I had to do. You know what I'm saying? I got bells, kid. I'm here, right? You ain't tell me nothing, man. You just Yo, I ain't waiting around for you to catch up with me. You know what I'm saying? I was locked up with this one guy who was telling me the, tr uh, the same kind of situation. And he was flat out admitting he was snitching. Like, you can't do that in jail. In any jail. And he was like, um, hey, oh yeah, I'm snitching. I'm, I'm telling on this on this one guy because I'm standing right there with him, talking to him. And he's selling dope. Right, the guy he's talking to. The police pull up. And the guy who he's talking to drops a, a bundle of dope by his feet. And they both run. I think they both run. I can't remember exactly. But maybe not, but I think they both run. Drops it by his feet. He he gets away and the other guy gets caught. The, the guy who he, he was just talking to. He wasn't even selling dope or anything. He gets caught and um, he's like, shit. He tried to blame it on me by dropping that dope right next to my fucking feet. So I'm, I'm going to just tell. Now, I was like conflicted. Like, damn, like this motherfucker a rat or not? Because... Um, usually the way it works is that if you're in on the crime and you get caught and you rat everyone else out just to save your own ass, that's snitching. But if you're not in on it, like this guy right here, we didn't know, he didn't know what the fuck was going to happen. Had he got caught and he rat his, rat his own homeboy out, would that be considered snitching? You know? Now, you can't compare this shit to what, uh, Bitch ass Takashi six nine did. That's whole. That's totally different. Cause in any criminal um, enterprise activity, whatever, you gotta expect everything. You gotta expect it. And Takashi acted like he didn't expect all that shit that happened to him to happen. Of course it's gonna happen. They're gonna, you know, try to fuck with your um, girlfriend, your wife, your baby mama. That's gonna. That's for sure. Like, come on. It rob you, all that, whatever the fuck he complains about, that was, that should have been expected. So if you don't, if you can't handle that, don't do it. You know how mommy is. So you know I, I know how mommy is. Mommy. Is. <laughs> you know, you <laughs> Damn. <laughs> See that kind of shit right there. Look at that. Look at that. He's mad as hell. See in that kind of situation. I remember uh, in the movie Friday, uh, the dad was like, uh, you know, fight, fist fight. You win some, you lose some, right? Here's the problem, though. For, the, for those kind of guys right there, like him, if you lose a fist fight in front of a lot of people, you feel flat out humiliated, straight up, right? So you try to uh, retaliate. You know, you... Uh, up the stakes a little bit and you get into some gunplay and those who saw you get your ass whooped they're gonna know whether they know uh, factually that, that you were involved in killing that person they're gonna know or at least have a, uh, a slight um, understanding that maybe you were involved because you know he fought you and you got whooped so maybe you retaliated or you do it so blatantly that hell yeah they know for a fact it was you and that's the problem people's pride so how do you combat that how do you fix that how do you get someone to take an ass whooping oh this part is hilarious me and my homeboys back you know back in the day used to love this part we used to laugh at this part it's a ball headed ass is he eating a burrito I told you that nigga my In New Jersey? Head. I actually got a little right, bucket right. too. Straight up and down. You know what they gonna do to you? They gonna lock your nigga ass up and throw away the key. And I just thought you were playing for them. Yeah. Shut up. Ooh. What the hell you laughing at with your bald headed ass? <laughs> there you go. You coming down here blowing spotter. Oh, shit. Struggling mama. Come <laughs> on. Yo, yo, what's up? I ain't going nowhere. That's how you should do it. It was starting to feel like the wall. You caught, you caught. Oh. Better start running. Come here. Talk to you. Damn. Thank God it's a terrible shot. And he's doing that sideways gun thing. 
Hey, Ray Love. I think the, 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 that song's called Fatty. These motherfuckers laughing at him getting shot at. I knew some friends like that back in the day. They didn't want to take anything seriously. They'd be just talking shit all day. They used to do that for real. Like bait cards, like hoping somebody would steal it. They're watching you. A little, another quick story. Y'all can fast forward this if y'all don't want to hear my little stories. But if you don't, fuck y'all. Um, like I said at the beginning, um, we never learned to use those fucking Slim Jims. I don't know how the fuck we fucking used it back then. We, we couldn't figure it out. And we practiced so much and we could not fucking figure that shit out. Maybe every car had a different design to, you know what I mean? But we couldn't figure it out. So, another thing was, uh, they called it a pull-out. It was, uh, oddly enough, they, they sold that shit at the swap meet. That's where we got it from. So, you stick, it's like a screw, right? It's like a screw at the end, and you screw it in the ignition. And they had a big-ass, heavy-ass weight at the end of it, which you could uh, maneuver up and down. You could just slide it up and down. But it's a big ass heavy weight. So, you know, you screw it into the ignition. And then, bam, you fucking pull hard as fuck. And hopefully the whole fucking uh, uh, key ignition part will just come off. I remember my homeboy, we was, it, was, it was our first time trying that. Like, alright, let's just try this this kind of method. Because before that, it was um just tear apart the uh, steering wheel column. Go inside. It's like a switch you can pull up. But um, so I just try it this way, with the it's tearing off the uh, whole key ignition. And we tried it, and my homeboy was fucking struggling. I was in I was in the car with him. I was I was on the um, passenger side looking out to see if anybody came out. He was on the uh, driver's side just trying to take that fucking steering wheel out. I mean I'm sorry the. Uh, the ignition thing out. You kept pulling on it like plow hard as fuck. It would not come off. To the point where he was fucking sweating. Like profusely. Like he was just dropping buckets of fucking sweat. He was just he was just dying and um it took a long ass time. And it was loud. I'm surprised nobody came out or whatever, but yeah, he was he, he did it. After a long ass time, I can't remember how long it took, but it took a very long time. But uh, after that, never again. Never again with that uh, dent puller. Whatever the fuck they called it. That's your ass. Damn. Now that I've seen happen recently with a stupid fucking ass, punk ass, fucking dirty ass, crooked ass cop. Turn around. He Turn shot around. at some teenagers. Man, I think he got fired and the family wants some money. Thank God. Look it up. Here he is. I never understood that. Like, some cops get in front of the car. Just trying to get away. So that justifies shooting shooting at the car. Cause you know, they're trying to get away, you get in front of it, and they lurch towards you. And fuck it, oh, that's enough. But really, it's like um stand your ground. Stand your ground laws is that if that person in front of you is not a threat, you can't shoot until it until they become a threat. But if if a person is, is um not advancing or actually backing up and you shoot oh it's all bad you're not in threat you're not in uh in danger so why why does not apply to cops you literally get in front of the car you're getting in front of the car you don't have to do that you let them you know fuck it let them let them leave you got the plates you got the the description get them later man if you get in front of the car you're putting your own self in danger I don't understand that. 
Your attention. What's up, nigga? It's like you ain't here. You deaf motherfucker. You trying to bring it to me or something, man? What's up? You better say goodbye to your man, Midget. See, that was, um, that kind of shit right there was before, um, all this gang politics came into New Jersey. Now, New Jersey got turned the fuck out with the blood and crypt thing. So, that kind of situation would be different right now. That's when, um, New Jersey was not really gang related. So, you were able to handle your business as a fucking man by yourself. But with a gang, you gotta, um, you got the politics. You got to go through certain channels. You got to talk to certain people. and Because you can, you know, you can't just walk up to someone like that if they're in the gang. They got the whole little gang backing them up. So it's different now. Damn, when your mom used to visit you in jail. Or visit me in jail. Ugh. My mom passed away. November 30th, 2020 of COVID. So, you know, these kind of movies. They take me back, you know. Um, yeah. Like, I, I was at a youth camp. For the same shit, for stealing cars or whatever. And, uh, yeah. In that youth camp, they, they, your, your parents or, or moms used to be able to bring you food. She used to bring me pizza and burritos and stuff. Magazines. She used to even sing to me. Like, for real, I would ask her, like, because in there, uh, it was kind of hard to get the music that you actually wanted. I mean, they, they gave you Walkman and shit, but I don't know. It was kind of hard. So I would ask you to sing uh, certain songs, you know. But yeah, I, you know, if this character was actually real, I could actually feel what the fuck she was going through. Wait, let me get this straight. I'm supposed to go shopping for <laughs> It is funny, isn't it? <laughs> you the one in jail. For real. I'll be out of here. Hey, Spock, picked him up. He got his muscle shirt took in his drawers. Right hand man, you gonna leave me at a rock? Yo, come on, man, what's up? That's a uh, very real shit right there. Like when you get locked up, you go to jail. Nobody gives a fuck for real. Even as a kid, when I was doing that stupid ass shit, uh, it was just. Uh, my girlfriend, of course, my mom, like family, you know. After that, you know, once you're in jail, nobody cares. Nobody gives a fuck. It's like you're almost like half dead, and it's especially like that when you're an adult, for sure. If you go to prison, I, I, I know, shit, I never been to prison. I've been to county jail, but I never been to prison. But same thing, I know so many guys that, that went to a prison. You're dead. To everyone else, but the ones that really love you. It's time you start thinking about what you're gonna do. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. Yo. That's right. That's that pivotal months. age, man. 18 you years old. Here, I think that's the biggest turn in your life. Negativity. The most important one. Spot got a nice ride. Oh! Brick yourself! Oh, it wasn't even her car. That's crazy. <laughs> you got a cross on a dash. Welcome home. On the uh, rear view mirror thing. That was the weirdest feeling. I remember that shit, clear as day. Like, you take someone's car, you kind of taking someone's uh, piece of their life. Because you discover a lot of things in that car that belong to that person. A lot of personal things. Let, let me tell y'all another story. You can fast forward this if you don't like it. Fuck it. I remember uh, me and my homeboys, we uh, we go into this parking lot. Store this old school ass caddy. Old school caddy. And uh, we're, we're driving around. 
for like a long ass time and we popped a trunk and it's like a lot like a uh, walking canes and shit like that it turns out it, it was an old folks home and I ain't never felt more shitty in my fucking life fuck man like imagine that old person when they tell all somebody to sell your car man like I'm you know all this shit is in hindsight but it's, it's just, there's some kids out there right now who want to impress their peers so much they'll do whatever and in that book I'm telling y'all about the Dark Innocence book uh, I, th- I think I, I think I include that shit in there where it's like most crimes that are committed by juveniles they do it just to get some kind of certain like a certain respect out of their peers now it's online they do some shit and they post it online cause god damn they gotta get the little props you know they could get away with it if they wanted to but nah they, they need they need them stripes they need that recognition they need that and it was like that back then too fuck the situation Fuck that, I'm going to give you another story. Fast forward if you don't want to hear this shit. No problem. Um, this shit haunts me to this day, right? Uh, me and my homeboy, we had a Kmart. Now, yeah, that's how long ago it was. We had a Kmart. Parking lot, stealing a car. I'm trying to fucking steal this car, right? He's on the, he's on the um, passenger side. It was a fucking IROC. Matter of fact, the IROC that you see in this movie at the beginning, that's the car we were trying to take. Ugh. And then an old lady, she had to be in her 70s, walks up to the car and starts screaming. Like, they're trying to take my car, they're trying to take my car. I'm like, only, why the fuck do you own this car, lady? What the fuck? I'm thinking this car belongs to some young dude or some 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 young person. Nope, she is the owner. She's screaming her head off, and we're trying to. I'm trying to, you know, take it and shit. Yeah, we take it, we get away. But fuck that, man. That shit fucking stayed in my memory for a long time. I mean, it ate at my conscience for real. And this is how you can fucking end up. This is how you end up. Right here. I like this movie because they don't really 100% exploit it, but they show you the real. They show you the consequences more than once. Like menace to society, they show you the real bad consequence at the end. This one shows you everything throughout the whole movie. The truth. 30 shots were fired into the van. Damn. That's how the game go. These dumb motherfuckers right here. What the fuck, yo? Ooh, look at that piece. Man. Let's go. That's real. Shout out to the outlaws. Tupac's peoples, man. But yeah, man. Uh, this is like an underrated hood movie. For real. If you ask someone what's your favorite hood movie, this ain't gonna be in their first. But that's cool. Um, I still like it a lot. I think it's more um, non-exploitive. I, if that's a word like they show you what could happen when you fuck around and make some mistakes you know like boys in the hood um all the consequences come at the end same thing with men in society it comes at the end but this one 
a lot of people die in the beginning, the middle, the end. And that's how life works. That's that's how it is, for real. But, yeah, from um, 1 to 10, I for sure give this a 10. Hell yeah. Classic. Underground, hood movie, but still classic. The acting was fucking real good. Especially by that guy who played uh, the boyfriend in um, Clueless. And Clueless, he, 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 he was a straight up West Coast cat. But right here, he sounded like a straight East Coast like dude for real. Like, man, you believe it. So give him his motherfucking props, you know? Thanks for watching. Check out one of my audiobooks, ebooks, paperbacks, or just donate to an app to support this channel. Link down below.